Tune. So there are two types of notation that we will use. The first one is my favorite, and I call it diamond bracket. And it looks a lot like a point, except the brackets you use are diamond brackets, not parentheses. That's in two-dimensional space. So we can write that symbol. That means is an element of two-dimensional space. So we saw that before. And three-dimensional. is an element of three-dimensional space. So that's what we call diamond bracket. And there's IJK notation. In IJK notation, our first vector, 3, 1, is written as 3i plus j. And the coefficients come from, or the coefficients are the amount you go in the i and j direction. And the second one, 1, 2, 4, looks like i plus 2j plus 4k. The coefficients. Determine the coordinates. And of course, what is i, j, and k? i, if you're in, let's see, if you're in two dimensions, i is 1, 0. If you're in three dimensions, i is 1, 0, 0. Depending on the number of dimensions you're in, we're generally going to be in 2 or 3. J is 0, 1. Or if you're in three dimensions, 0, 1, 0. And in three dimensions, or sorry, K, K is not in two dimensions. So K really only has a three dimensional representation, 0, 0, 1. So you can think of i, j, and k as the vectors that go in the x, y, and then in k in the z direction. So they point basically straight down the axis. And k cannot exist in R2 because it is using the third coordinate. So it wouldn't make sense to write it in R2. K only exists in R3. Vectors are graphed as arrows. not points. So we'll start out with a few So we'll graph vector v is 3, 2. So go over 3, go up 2. This is in two dimensions. Normally, we would put a point right there if we were grabbing points. But this vector is an arrow, and you draw from the origin to the end point. So this arrow right here is vector v. The 
second vector w to negative 2. So I want you to graph w right now. What type of coordinates are we using here? We're going rectangular. So we've got x's and y's, basically. What co coordinates do you think we're going to be using soon? Polar. Polar. And everything is going to be the same when we switch over. So the process of changing coordinates is not going to change at all. Just the way we write things are going to change. So it's a question of notation, really. And we'll talk about addition now. So graphically, addition is head to tail. So V plus W, I'm going to do my best to redraw V and W, V plus W so graphically you go V and then W at the end and the result vector is right down here actually let's use another color the result vector is the pink vector here V plus W. So go across V and then go across W. Let's do the same thing in coordinates. We got V and W coordinates right here. What do you think we can do to add these two vectors together? What makes sense? According to the picture, it should be another vector. So we better not get a number out of this. So I need one vector. Oh, let's try that. Let's add x's and y's. So you got 3 plus 2 is our new. So the 3x plus the 2 for the other x. And now, for the y's, we get 2 plus negative 2. So we're going to get 5, comma, 0. So if we more carefully add up v and w on their graph, assuming our graph is pretty decent, we'll use blue up on the graph v plus w so go v and then go another w after that make the axis a little longer we need to go two to the right and then two down so i just put a copy of w right there so go cross v and then cross w and where do we end up The pink vector V plus W, right there. Which we said was 5, 0 when we added the coordinates up. So it makes sense on the picture. So addition, you just add each coordinate one at a time. So basically add coordinates together to get new vector. One of the next properties we're going to see is the 
magnitude or the modulus. So it's the same magnitude or modulus or absolute value, however you like to call it, with complex numbers. Same thing with, uh, it's a radius before when we were talking about points. So this is not new, just in the case of vectors now. So our magnitude, we're going to use the vertical bars just like we did before. So V is AB, magnitude V, all you do is square root, A squared plus B squared. If W is three coordinates, ABC, magnitude W, what do you think we'll do with our third coordinate? pattern to almost everything. Well, everything that I'd show you. So we're going to do the same thing, square C added to the other ones inside the square root. And if we had higher dimensions, if we're in four dimensions, I'd square all four coordinates and add them up and then square root. If we had five coordinates, it would look the same with five. So however many dimensions we're in, you just keep adding that next coordinate squared. What's that? What does it look like? Uh, if you graph higher dimensions, you just graph like this and you say this is Rn, that's Rm, and the total space is r to the m plus n power. So you can say each of those are two dimensions, and so that whole space is four dimensions. That doesn't necessarily help because we are graphing a di multiple dimensions as if it's one. So the hard part is thinking about how, how do I imagine two dimensions in a line? Uh, one way in four dimensions you can visualize it as time is the fourth dimension, so you can think about the way things are changing in three dimensions as the fourth dimension. All right, so that is magnitude right there. Properties. Oh, we need scalar multiplication first before I can show you these properties. So before I talk about scalar multiplication, we'll talk about scalars. For us, it'll be any real number. Because we're dealing in vectors, if we want to talk about numbers, we have to use a special word, so we'll call them scalars when we're dealing in vectors. So most u's and v's and w's, those will all be vectors, and scalars will be the numbers. Usually with vectors, We'll use scalars alpha, that's a bad alpha, alpha, beta, gamma. I don't think we use too many other letters for scalars. So we'll try to use Greek letters in the beginning of the alphabet. And those will all be real numbers. So we can multiply uh, by scalars. You've been multiplying scalars, times scalars for a long time and adding up scalars. So those are just the numbers, arithmetic. So let's talk about scalar multiplication into vectors. So if you have alpha times the vector a, b, c, scalar multiplication is multiply each of the coordinates. 
So it looks like this. You're basically distributing. In IJK notation, you have to use parentheses so you know you're multiplying alpha by that whole quantity or that whole vector inside, and you literally distribute. So it is really just like distribution. We'll do one really fast example. So find it, simplify this scalar product and then subtraction. You can distribute the negative inside the second vector and turn it into addition, or you could keep the negative outside and leave it as subtraction. So when I said leave it as subtraction, I did that in the right column there. So if you left it that way, that's totally fine too. Just make sure you subtract. There's really not much more to scalar multiplication than this right here. It's just like distributing. You can also do the opposite, where you unscalar multiply, which, you, which would feel a lot like factoring. So you can distribute a scalar in, you can factor a scalar out. Now we can write down uh, modulus properties or magnitude properties. So V is a vector, we're going to go with alpha as a scalar. No matter what, magnitude is going to be zero or more. So you can't get negative magnitude. What happens if your magnitude is zero? What can you say about the vector? You know quite a bit about that vector. And where did magnitude come from? Somewhere right up here. What happens if I add either of these quantities up and get zero? What can you say about little a and little b? It better be zero. Because if any a, b are not zero, you're not going to get zero when you add them together and square them. For example, if a is negative b, when you square them, that negative is going to go away. So there's no way to add this up and get zero unless you just have zeros. So that rule down here, if your magnitude is zero, that happens exactly when now I want to write the zero vector. So if I just write v equals zero like this, it looks like v is a number. So what I'm going to do instead is make the zero extra bold. And what I mean by that is the zero vector. So we make it super bold to to note the zero vector. What is the zero vector? It's a vector filled up with zeros. It just depends on what dimension you're in. So if you're in R2, the zero vector in R2, the zero vector is 
0, 0. In R3, the 0 vector is 0, 0, 0. So you just have to know what dimension you're in. And then you can write down your 0 vector explicitly. Of course, if you're in R4, it's four zeros in a row. So that's what we mean by the zero vector. Make sure your zero doesn't look like your zero vector. So I just make I just make the circle like three or four times so it looks bold. So does that look like the point at the origin? Like it looks like the Yeah, yeah. If you graph this in any dimension, it's just the arrow that goes nowhere. So it's kind of a boring graph. You should probably make it a little bit bigger than that or you won't notice it. But no matter how many dimensions you're in. If you say, what about three dimensions? Oh, I'll just draw a third dimension through it like that. Or you can say this is three dimensions. There's two right there and one dimension up there. So it's three now. So the zero vector does, is basically acts like the origin in whatever dimension you're in. So I didn't talk about negative v, but let's think about what is negative v. That's negative 1 times v. So if v points that direction, negative v is going to point the opposite direction. So if that's v, negative v is exactly the same vector, except it goes the opposite direction. That's negative v. And how are these magnitudes related? Their distance from the origin better be the same. Better not change if you just change. You're basically changing the direction of it to the opposite. So we get vector magnitudes the same as negative the vector. And alpha v, if I multiply vector by a number, It is the absolute value of alpha times the magnitude of the vector. So we get the absolute value of the real number scalar multiplied by the vector magnitude. Now why am I labeling all this? Because they mean slightly different things right here. The alpha is absolute valued, so if it's negative, make it positive. The vector is, that's a magnitude. So you don't make the coordinates positive if you're taking the absolute val the uh, magnitude of that vector. Unfortunately, the notation looks the same. So some places, some, I don't think our book does this. The old textbook we used to use, they used a double bar for magnitude, which you're welcome to use if you want to. And that way, when you see alpha next to uh, the magnitude of v, it's obvious which one's absolute value, which one's magnitude. So where did I write the original magnitude? Right there. So other notation, so you might see a double vertical bar for magnitude. And if that works better for you, for magnitudes, you can go for it. I can read it both ways. Anybody have a copy of the textbook? If you go into 10.8, can you see which, I'm pretty sure they use the notation that I used. 10, 11, 8, those vectors, sorry. Should be able to find magnitude or modulus pretty quickly in there.
All right, a Jeopardy question, where's zero points? When the magnitude of the modulus is one, what type of vector do we call this V? Very good, unit vector. So unit vector does have a one. It's not in any particular coordinate. One is in the magnitude or the length. So we have unit vectors here, and they have unit, uh, unit length is one. Any luck finding the book notation? <laughs> it's a big chapter. All right, so we got unit vector. Let's look how to make a unit vector. So let's say you have a vector v, but maybe v is too big. I want a unit vector. We'll call this unit vector u. So I want it to go in the same direction as v, except I want it to be length 1 or magnitude 1. So what does it mean for u and v to be in the same direction? So we have the idea of parallel. u and v are parallel if, so what does it mean to be parallel? They both go the same direction. So they're parallel if there's an alpha greater than zero such that one vector is a multiple of the other a positive multiple of the other. So this is what it means to be parallel. The two vectors are multiples, positive multiples of the other. So why did I put alpha on the u side? Why did I put alpha on the v side? Well, here I put the scalar on the v side. What's the only time that multiplying by 1 over alpha is not going to work? When alpha is 0. So as long as alpha is not 0, I can put the scalar multiple on either side. Just write it as a reciprocal. Now if alpha is positive, is 1 over alpha positive? Yep. So they're either both positive or they'd both be negative. And as long as alpha is not zero, you can move the scalar to the other side, no problem. So you think of alpha as basically, um, in this picture I drew, maybe alpha is four, approximately. Because you need to make u times four would be v in this case. So u is four times shorter than v, or v is four times longer, however you like to think about that. Yes, sir? You can write it like that, but I, that would be scalar division, which I didn't really define, but it works just like scalar multiplication. You just divide each coordinate by alpha. Uh, so it would be the same thing. Uh, the bigger secret is there is no such thing as division. So there is, you, there is no v divided by alpha. There is, uh, there is only multiplying by reciprocals. There's also no subtraction. There's only adding negatives. So I try to avoid subtraction and division whenever I can. They don't, they're derived words. They don't actually have meaning in themselves. Like they're just adding negatives or multiplying by reciprocals. All right, so that's what it means to be parallel or go to the same direction. If, what happens if alpha is negative? If alpha equals zero, it's a little silly. That means one of the vectors is zero. But if alpha is less than zero, and alpha u equals v, so 
So they're definitely not parallel. That's what it mean, means if they're multiples and alpha is positive. This time alpha is negative. How do vectors u and v relate? So if I told you that was v and alpha was negative 4, what direction would u have to point? Opposite. So if that was v, that means u, so if alpha is negative 4, u would be a vector 1 fourth as long, but also in the negative or opposite direction. So what word do we use here? We use anti-parallel. So if they are multiples, but they're negative multiples of each other, negative scalar multiples, then we call that anti-parallel, or the opposite of parallel. So now, we're not talking about lines, which have no real direction. They go both ways. So lines being parallel or not parallel. That's fine, but now we can have parallel or parallel but opposite. So we call it anti-parallel. OK, so all of this was just to get back to how do we make a unit vector in the direction of, w, of v. So u is going to be v divided by magnitude v. Oh, I said the bad word, divided by. I better correct that. So we're going to multiply by the scalar, 1 over magnitude v. When is this not going to work out? When would this not make any sense to write? Yeah, when the vector v is 0 or the magnitude v is 0. And they're the same thing. So this is going to work whenever magnitude v is not 0. So if you don't have a 0 vector, you can scale it to make it a unit vector. Even if your vector is really short, you can multiply it by a large number and make it have magnitude 1. The only vector you can't go in that direction and have magnitude 1 is the 0 vector. There's no direction to go. So why does this work out? So this is, put a box around this. Why does this work? All we're going to do is find the magnitude of this vector. So I just took the vector on the right side, 1 over magnitude v times the vector v. So we're going to use our scalar product uh, magnitude rules. They look like this. You can do absolute value of the number multiplied by modulus or magnitude of the vector. So scalar is just itself with absolute value. So this first one is absolute value. Is there any way 1 over magnitude v could be negative? We said it better not be 0, so that's out. But can that whole entire quantity be negative? Nope. We got positive 1 divided by another positive number. So I don't need the absolute value. And now, this is a reciprocal times itself. So I get to cancel them out right there. So I just get the number 1. So as long as v is not the 0 vector, you can scale it like this and get a unit vector.
you won't be responsible for that proof. Just what I put in the box, finding a unit vector in that direction. So just take that uh, vector divided by its magnitude and you have a unit vector in that direction. So we're going to turn points into vectors now. So if you have some vector v, you could also think about vector v going from point 0 to point 1, or from the initial point to the final point. How does v relate to p1 and p0, or p0, as scientists like to call it? So if I relabel them as start and end, so vector v is going to be n minus start, or p1 minus p0. Another notation, a lot of people use this notation right here. It's the vector from P0 to P1. So the arrow above, you can make it a full arrow if you want to. That says it's the vector from P0 to P1. So how are you supposed to remember this? Well, n minus start right here, that's how you compute uh, the elapsed time or the elapsed distance, whatever you're using. You can say, what time is it now minus what time is it when I woke up? And that's how much I've been awake for. So you, you've been doing this type of thing for a while. You're just finding the difference between the end and the start. And that's how much you've traveled, or in this case, that's how far or the exact amount of distance you've traversed. I shouldn't use the word distance. Uh, that is the change of position right there. So if you still need more visual, a visual way to remember this, So there's a bow right here. You can make, make it a compound bow if you want to. Extra string, etc. cetera. Oh, no, they don't go that way. That'll make it look ugly. They actually go like that. So we just won't draw any of that stuff. All right, so there's a bow right here. So do you pull a bow back before you get the arrow set up? No, that's not a good step. So you, you actually start at the front get everything set up, and then you pull back to the end. All right, so just think we start here. I shouldn't use one and We actually start at the front and then pull it back. All right, so that's how we have end minus start. So you do the end first. So take care of this stuff first, and then pull back to the start. You can just remember end minus start. That might work better. Do a example on this. So you can graph this also. You're graphing, oh, that looks a lot like a diamond bracket. These are supposed to be points. So these are both points. So graph these two points, draw the vector, and then compute the actual coordinates of that vector.
and if you measure on your graph, you should go over five and up four. If you want to do all this visually. So all vectors are not created equally. Most vectors are not equal to most other vectors. So we have to decide when are vectors actually equal. So let's take two vectors in two dimensions. We'll go v1 and v2. So when are these two vectors equal? So it would be nice if their coordinates matched. If they both want the same amount over and they both want the same amount up. So the answer is exactly when A1 equals A2 and B1 equals B2. So they have to have the exact same coordinates. So when I write they have the same coordinates, they have the same number of coordinates, and the value of each coordinate is the same. So number of co coordinates, that means matching dimension. And each of the coordinates values are equal. So your x's match, your y's match, your z's match. If you have more than three coordinates, all the rest of them match as well. Find the unit vector parallel to 4i minus 3j. If you're a diamond bracket notation person, it's probably too early to tell what type you are. You'll decide when you're doing your homework which way you like to go. You can either stick with 4i minus 3j, or you could write it as 4 comma negative 3. So first of all, is this vector the zero vector? Nope, it's not all filled with zeros. So we can find a unit vector in the same direction. This vector is too big to be a unit vector. Anytime you see a coordinate bigger than one, you're out. So we'll give it a name, we'll call this V. And I'm going to let U be one over magnitude V times V. That's how we find the unit vector. So we just take that vector divided by its magnitude. So first find the magnitude of V, and then multiply V by the reciprocal of this magnitude.
and this vector was a 3, 4 hidden 5 vector or the Pythagorean th triple 3, 4, 5 so your magnitude is 5 so you just have to divide each coordinate by 5 and that will be your unit vector